Hello everybody and uh, welcome to the channel. Um, today we will be discussing about classification algorithms. So these are the basic few important classification algorithms which we see. They are Navebys, Support Vector Machines, KNN, K Nearest Neighbor, CART or Decision Tree. This is classification and regression trees. So where on this classification algorithm falls into? This falls in supervised machine learning. So, supervised machine learning has basically two types of algorithm. I mean, you can solve the problems of supervised machine learning with either regression or classification. This totally depends upon the data we have. So, let's first understand the supervised machine learning. This means that the output is already known. And this is also called as the labeled data set. We have the labeled data set with us, which we have to train a machine to that output. Suppose this iris data set we have, and this iris is a flower species, and this has got three different species or targets, and these are labeled Vasicola, Virginica, and Setosa. So these you can see that they are labeled. Now you have to train your model on these species. On these label data okay and this iris data set is also called as hello world example in machine learning very basic data set this is wherein we learn the machine learning models and this is supervised because we already know the species of the flower so this is supervised machine learning now I am saying that this is classification we will use classification algorithms to train a model for this why by classification because we already know to which class the flower will fall in. Either now given the dimensions, the petal length and petal width as you can see, or the sepal length and sepal width. Given these, these things, we will identify which flower is in which class. So this is a classification problem. So now when I talk of classification, this is deals with discrete or non-continuous data. So you are you know very clearly that's it will fall in which class and regression algorithms or regression problems deal with continuous data for example the housing data prices the weather predictions now how do we train the data we train it either by any of the algorithms depending on the data set either regression or classification and we've seen that regression works with continuous data that is housing price weather predictions and we use linear or logistic regression for this and the classification is used with discrete data either you classify dog cat and and one of one of the example which we are going to see is also titanic survival rate prediction which was a kaggle competition which we'll see soon that we have to predict how many survived and how many died okay so that is a classification problem now coming next to the classification algorithms that we use to train the model first is knn that is k nearest neighbor now this k nearest neighbor this uses a distance metric and by default it is minkowski now you understand this by this what happens is suppose you are given a new new example now you have to classify to which class this will fall either in the class 1 square or the triangle class 2 what happens is it takes the distance depending on this k which we assign what we want k is equals to 1 so it will it will map the distance of the nearest first neighbor or three neighbors or k can be 5 7 usually we take it in the odd numbers so we'll see the distance of this k it will map the distance as assigned by k so if it is 1 it will see the nearest one first neighbor from this new example and if it is very close it will classify in that class so if it is coming very close to this blue one it will be classified as class one right so what happens is it takes the mean outcome of the neighbors as prediction so this is how knn works and this is a non-linear regression actually it it is uh, it is used in iris data set also so we'll see how it works the next is naive bias now this as you can see this is again a classification problem as this this you can see these are being classified 
Now it works with probability and it is called naive because it is innocent as it treats every input independently. Now in real world this is a problem because uh, every input cannot be treated independently. There is some relation between two inputs and it is also computationally very costly. So what happens is naive bias this calculate probability of each class and probabilities for the new data are also being calculated and what happens is if it is falls nearer to uh, some uh, already defined probability it will be classified in that class okay next is your cart or classification and regression tree so this can be used with both classification and regression algorithms and or decision trees now what happens is this constructs a binary tree from the training data so you have a decision node from that they will be split into two different nodes okay now how do you split it this is split point they are being chosen greedily by evaluating the attributes okay and and how why it is called greedy because it gives you the minimum cost like guinea index so that is why it is greedy because if it is uh, getting that yes this is the shortest and this will minimize the cost so this will choose that parameter and it will split from that end so that is what it is uh, done to minimize the cost decision trees and as you can see it in the figure this is how the split is being done and if again what the division is to be made that node is chosen as a decision and then you've got leaf nodes for that right next is svm that is support vector machines now this is this is quite important and this is a very useful algorithm what happens is this seeks a line that best separates the two classes as you can see here and this can also be used for multiple classes with an advancement in this uh, modification to svm now these data instances as you can see here these circles and these stars these are called support vectors because the line these are closest to this line which is being drawn and they help to classify the data okay and what is the function we are using here by default is the radial basis function now you see here whatever this is the gap and these are the support vectors this is the line drawn and whatever inputs we have the attributes if they are falling with within this line this measurement they'll be classified here in class one and whatever is falling beyond this they will be classified as class 2 so this is how svm works and later pros and cons the advantages disadvantages we will see in further videos of each algorithm so in the next video we will see the regression algorithms in supervised machine learning thank you for watching